4 g 6 3 ain't no more free, little Steve I gave him chance, a chance, a chance again I even had told him, please I find it crazy, the police to shoot you Ain't know that you're dead, but she tell you to freeze If I seen what I seen, I guess they mean Dominique Jones, born December 3, 1994, known professionally as Little Baby, was born in Atlanta, Georgia in the Oakland City neighborhood. He grew up in Atlanta's West End, a historic neighborhood where burned houses blend with encroaching gentrification and emerald green trees. He was two years old when his father left the family, leaving his single mother to raise him and his two sisters. While he was not struggling academically, Jones would repeatedly get in trouble, resulting in him dropping out of Booker T. Washington High School in the ninth grade. Baby grew up in a small house with his mother, who worked in the post office after serving with the Marines, and his two sisters. He was the only boy, and I had two girls, Miss Lachon, Baby's mother says. I spent a lot of time with him. He didn't really have anybody. Baby's father was absent. There's really a lot of things about the hard life and come up with the rapper that you didn't know about, and all that will be covered in this documentary video. But before we take a full dive, I want you to take one second out of your precious time to leave me a like. Then, drop a comment in the comment section below telling me what issues in the world of rap you want to see me make videos about. Once you've done that, go ahead and smash that red subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon right beside it so that you'll get notified by YouTube when I drop your requested video. And now that I know you've liked, commented, subscribed, and turned on notifications, let's take a deep dive into the life of little baby. When asked how that shaped her son, Lashon says, I guess you can't miss what you never had. It wasn't like his father was in the picture and then took off. By 16, Baby was getting what he calls real money, enough to afford apartments and cars that would make most high schoolers jealous. Around that time, he was dubbed little Baby by a man named Wicked. I used to be going to sleep wherever. I used to leave my trash everywhere. Typical little baby shit, Baby says. They start calling me little baby. Eventually, Baby would stop attending high school, committing full time to drug dealing, needing the money more than anything, he says. I knew all the drug dealers around my neighborhood. When I was like 10 or 11, I was hanging out with a dude who was like 17. He was getting money to buy a car, having his own little spot. So he was a lot of my motivation, too. By the time Baby turned 17 himself, he had two condominiums that cost about $2,000 a month. Meanwhile, Baby was beginning to see the way his friends' lives were changing. Young Thug was ahead of him at Booker T. Washington High School, and at one point, he shared a condo with Offset. Offset was the rapper, Baby remembers. He's coming to me like, I got a two-bedroom condo, give you half of it. But he was going on the road, so shit, it was really like my condo. Then at 20, it finally caught up to Baby. After being sent to jail three times, he was inevitably sent to prison for about two years on weapons and drug charges. You're gonna have to be there to actually just fathom what it was like. He says of his time behind bars, it's misery. By Baby's estimate, he knows 20 people currently serving life sentences. Five of those are close personal friends. He refers to Quality Control Studio, a space the size of a couple of conference rooms. Imagine just sitting in QC until you die, he says. Whether you do everything I tell you to do, you're in here until you die. So you ain't living no other purpose until you die. Man, that's a fucked up way to live. I'd rather everybody just, you get a life sentence and they just take you in the back and kill you. I guarantee you, you asked half of the people who got a life sentence if they'd rather be taken out back right now and killed, they'll say yeah, guaranteed. Because what are you living for? Hardest thing I've ever had to see in my life, Miss Lachon says of watching her son go to prison. I hope and pray I never have to go through anything like that again. She visited him every weekend during his sentence, and she distinctly remembers conversations that would ultimately change their lives. He had called home, we talked like we always talked, and I asked him what was his plan when he got out. He was like, Mom, I want to be a rapper. I was like, a rapper? Really? You know how when people go away, they say anything. But the day he came home, he went to the studio, and it took off after that. Before he was a rapper, Baby was a constant presence in the orbit of QC. When Migos, Rich the Kid, Skippa da Flippa, and Lil Duke were cutting their teeth in the label studio, he was right there, not rapping. A weed dealer with a prestigious reputation, Baby would wait for rappers to return from shows flush with cash that he might take from them one way or another. They was getting money, but goddamn, Baby says, still incredulous. They probably get like 30 grand a show, but they're doing three, four shows, so they come back with 50, 60, and I might win the whole 50. It was Coach K who noticed something in 17-year-old Baby the young dealer had yet to see in himself. K is the power broker behind the Millennium's first cadre of Atlanta legends. Young Jeezy, Gucci Mane, and those shaping the city's future, Migos and Lil Yachty. With a salt and pepper beard and a slow gait, he's the calm at the center of quality control's constant hurricane. 
In Baby, he saw someone with the voice, style and respect required for success in Atlanta's rap ecosystem. I remember one day we were standing outside the studio, Coach K says. I'll never forget this, he had on all white and I was just like, baby, man, why don't you rap? Like he got the swag, he got the lingo, he get respect around the city from the east side to the west side to the south side, why don't you rap? He used to be like, coach, I'm a street inward, he used to laugh at me. Rap is a genre built on embellishment and inspires correctional officers with delusions of grandeur to become fox kingpins and multicolored internet trolls to envision themselves as the most notorious gang member in America. But Baby's life was already interesting. He didn't need hyperbole. I was just like, shit, half these rappers telling your story, Coach K continues. Dog, your shit's so real, I bet if you decide to do it, you're going to be big. By any standards, Little Baby's rise was unnervingly fast. After Coach K's cajoling, Baby recruited Young Thug, already an Atlanta superstar, and his future collaborator Guna to help teach him how to rap. It turned out he was good at it, a dexterous rhymer with a strong grasp of melody, firmly in the traditions of late 2010's Atlanta hip-hop. He favored booming trap drums, smearing autotune, and working at a frighteningly productive pace. Within three years, he was a star. His second album, My Turn, was released in February and is the most streamed in the US last year. Then, the country began to fall apart. In the wake of George Floyd's killing, Little Baby, like millions of other Americans, took to the streets to protest. That type of shit I would want to do if I wasn't a rapper, he said. It's like something that's going on in history and time. But unlike the majority of protesters still marching for change, Lil Baby wrote a song about it. Released in June, the bigger picture was a daringly precise stream of consciousness that finds Baby grappling with the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Rayshard Brooks against a simple piano-led beat. That killing us for no reason, been going on for too long to get even, he raps. Throws us in cages like dogs and hyenas, I went to court, they sent me to prison. According to Baby and his team, the proceeds from the song will be donated to a variety of organizations. To Little Baby, the bigger picture isn't a protest song. I just rap about my life. All my songs are basically about me, Baby says. It was at a point where I felt I needed to say something. Before he was a platinum selling rapper, the system made sure to underscore the fact that his black life didn't matter. The bigger picture isn't a radical gesture, it's Baby's sheer existence as a more potent act of protest. Now this shit counts, he says. You gonna hear me. I've been a victim of police brutality, he continues nonchalantly. I've been in prison where white officers control you. I've been in a court system where white judges give you a different time than they would give someone white. There have been times I had a physical altercation with an officer, and he then grabbed me and took me to a room where there's no camera. We have a physical altercation and left me in a room for about an hour. I'm in there yelling and screaming, I'm so accustomed to it, we don't even make it no big deal. Where we come from, we've got so accustomed to something going wrong, right? Ain't nothing we're gonna be able to do about it. I'm from Atlanta, where they had a unit of police that got dismantled for police brutality. The red dogs got dismantled for using way too much force. That shit an everyday thing where I'm from. The bigger picture is among the most urgent artist statements released since Black Lives Matter exploded into, by some accounts, the biggest American protest movement ever recorded. Even if Baby isn't rapping about anyone but himself, it's clear people are listening. The bigger picture has been streamed more than 100 million times, and Coach K says it brought a new level of attention to Baby's entire catalog. The bigger picture shouldn't have been necessary for people to take Baby seriously. The socio-political screed wasn't a surprise for Little Baby or his fans. He's always been a thoughtful writer, wrapped in bass-filled beats. But for those not paying attention or with a predisposition to writing off trap MCs in favor of more traditional lyricists like Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole, it was a culture shock. Someone who talks like Baby, draw and all, isn't the type of rapper who tends to be critically revered or obsessively analyzed. But he has long been discussing the ground level effects of systematic racism and brutality. It's impossible to escape. And as a new generation of protesters take to the streets, it's not the jubilant Kendrick and Farrell refrain of we gonna be alright that they're often heard shouting. Instead, people demand that cops move bitch like ludicrous, or summon the spear of the late pop smoke when chanting Christian, Dior, Dior, I'm up in all the stores, when it rains, it pours. The bigger picture is imperfect. At points, it seems as if it hedges its bets. Corrupted police have been the problem from where I'm from, Baby raps in the second verse, but I'd be lying if I said it was all of them. When pushed on the idea that there can't be good police in a fundamentally flawed and racist system, Baby pushes back. Just because you work in a racist system doesn't mean you racist, he explains. Damn near every system that got a job is a racist system, you know what I mean? 
CEOs be like old white people. You never know, they gotta be some kind of racist, cause at some certain age, your parent. That was the way of life almost. So I almost feel like all these corporations or whatnot may be racist, and black people are racist too. To me, a racist is someone who treats a different race than theirs a different way than they would treat theirs, Baby says. I feel like if you're a black person and you treat all black people one way and all white people one way, you're racist. I'm not racist, so I give a white person a chance to talk and actually we get into it before I can say I don't like you or not. And I feel the same way about a black person. You ain't gonna be my buddy just cause you're black, just straight up. In 2017, Little Baby introduced viewers to his world in the video for his first breakout moment, My Dog. With an auto-tune draw, Baby painted a life he is partially still entrenched in. Me and my dogs, me and my dogs, we're trying to run in your house, he's saying. We want them bricks, we want the money, you can keep all of the pounds. Three years later, riding past the Oakland Food Mart prominently featured in the video, it's hard not to know that his baby has become more economically free. His old neighborhood, too, has become a hot spot for the free market to take root. In 2013, $18 million in federal funding was secured for Atlanta's Beltline, a project to develop a trail through the city that accelerated gentrification in neighborhoods like the West End. Five years later, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution dubbed the West End one of the city's upward-trending neighborhoods. Little Baby's debut studio album, Harder Than Ever, 2018, was certified RIAA Platinum and included the song Yes Indeed with Drake, which peaked at 6 on the Billboard Hot 100. He went on to release two more mixtapes in 2018, Drip Harder and Street Gossip, the former containing his most popular song, Drip Too Hard, which peaked at number 4 on the Billboard Hot 100, and the latter peaked at number 2 on the US Billboard 200. Little Baby's second studio album, My Turn 2020, peaked at number 1 on the Billboard 200 and is certified two times platinum by the RIAA. The song We Paid from the album, which features 42 Doug, charted at number 10 on the Hot 100. In June 2020, he released the single The Bigger Picture, which peaked at number 3 on the Hot 100 and became the highest charting song of his career. Throughout his career, Little Baby has been nominated for three Grammy Awards, two American Music Awards, two MTV Video Music Awards, and several BET Awards. He has been crowned as the biggest all-genre artist of the year at the Apple Music Awards 2020. Pierre P. Thomas, Quality Control's CEO, knew firsthand the allure of Baby's old life. P, fatherly and proud when discussing his signee, has known Baby roughly since 2010 when he was a wiry teenager. He used to run around with my best friend Big, P says. Baby is like my brother. While Baby was locked up, P began planting seeds. When he was in prison, I used to talk to him and tell him like, yo, when you come home, try to get in the studio and rap, P continues. I had a big influence in Baby switching over from the streets to the music. In early 2012, he was charged for possession with intent to sell, among other charges. His original lawyer urged him to take a two-year plea deal, but Jones refused and acquired a new lawyer. This new lawyer placed Jones in a special program that would only hold him for a year. While in this program, he got into an altercation with a white prisoner over racial comments, after Jones' sentencing was replaced with the original two-year deal. Later, in 2013, he had a charge of possession of marijuana, less than an ounce. In 2014, he was arrested again and charged with possession of marijuana with intent to sell, among other things. After being incarcerated for two years, he began his rap career with 4PF, 4 Pockets Full, and Quality Control Music. A couple of days after his release from prison in 2016, Baby arrived at the studio ready to rap. After trying and failing to make a fully realized song, Baby said fuck it and abandoned his dream. It wasn't until January 2017 that he'd finally commit to his new path and finish a song. Days Off, the introduction to Baby's inaugural mixtape, Perfect Timing, shows off a voice he had yet to settle into, a nasally delivery that sounds like an unpolished imitation of future. Baby raps, savage for the money, going hard for my kids, sometimes I had nightmares about the shit that we did. From there, Baby's palette developed as he learned to mind feelings of heartbreak, close friends, and despair, emotionally scarred, all while his technical skills sharpened. On songs like Spaz and Pure Cocaine, Baby grew more and more deft, the speed of his performance and the growing fluidity of his delivery were antithetical to the hypnotic repetitiveness of peers like Guna and 21 Savage. He'd continue to contend with his past on record, but he is adamant that his songs are not about him wrestling with any internal guilt he has yet to shake. You keep saying guilt, Baby says. I ain't never been guilty. Even if I did it, I ain't guilty. I don't got no guilty conscience. I'm a firm believer in what's done is done, and I don't believe in conflict. I believe in manifestation. As Baby began to finish songs, P saw an opportunity to saturate the market. 
In 2017 alone, Baby released four projects. The following year, he dropped three more. P's formula was simple. Grab whatever songs Baby had lying around, sequence them, commission artwork, release to streaming services, repeat. The most challenging part wasn't even making the music, but persuading Baby to hit the same circuit that forged the now legendary work ethics of his predecessors, Migos. I had to argue with him sometimes, because at the time he was making a lot of money on the streets and I used to put him on the road to do promo, P explains. He used to go through the Chitlin circuits and do shows, but he wasn't getting paid. He might be getting $500 to $1,000 a show. In order for him to do these shows, he got to get a van, drive there, four hours, go to the show, and come back. Rashad, Baby's avidable day-to-day -day manager, vividly remembers taking the budding artist to hole-in-the-wall clubs in places like Jackson, Mississippi. Seeing him perform in these clubs, you don't have production, you don't have a screen, you don't have pyrotechnics, you don't have CO2. I didn't even think we had a DJ. I think I was just telling the DJ, like the club DJ, what song to play at the time. Like he would be the performer, I would be in the DJ booth for the DJ, like cool, play this song next, play that song. Shortly after his release from prison, Jones released his mixtape, Perfect Timing, with features from Young Thug, Lil Yachty, and others. He released his second mixtape entitled Harder Than Hard on July 18th, 2017. On October 9th, 2017, Jones released a collaboration mixtape with close friend and fellow Atlanta rapper Marlo, To The Hard Way. This mixtape did not create as big an impact as the former two tapes, but still garnered some attention. Through the success of the single, Jones attracted much attention towards his mixtape. When the mixtape was finally released, it featured the single All of a Sudden, which featured rapper and friend Moneybag Yo. The mixtape was defining of much of Jones' current career. In May 2018, Baby released his debut studio album, Harder Than Ever, which debuted at number 3 on the US Billboard 200 chart. The album was supported by the singles Southside and Yes Indeed with Drake. The latter peaked at number 6 on the Billboard Hot 100. Life Goes On, featuring Lil Uzi Vert and Guna, charted at 74 on the Billboard Hot 100. After Lil Baby released Harder Than Ever, he released his collaboration mixtape, Drip Harder, with label mate and close friend Guna on October 5th, 2018. The lead single, Drip Too Hard, went on to become certified RIA Platinum, and MC Platinum peaked at number 4 on the Billboard Hot 100, and became nominated for Best Rap Song Performance at the 62nd Annual Grammy Awards. The mixtape was released under the labels Quality Control, YSL Records, and Motown Capital. He has an upcoming song with Young Thug and Jahomi, an underrated artist from New York in 2022 that has been teased for the past three years. In September 2018, Baby appeared in the Adult Swim television series Fish Center Live. In November 2018, he released his mixtape Street Gossip, and in December 2018, Baby collaborated with Young Gravy on the latter single Alley Hoop. He starred in How High 2, the sequel to the 2001 stoner film How High, which premiered on April 20th, 2019 on MTV. On June 21st, 2019, Baby and Rapper Future released a second title, Out of the Mud. On July 17, 2019, Little Baby appeared alongside the Baby on the single Baby, released on Quality Control's second studio album, Control the Streets, Volume 2. The song peaked at number 21 on the Billboard Hot 100. On November 8th, 2019, Baby released his single, Woe, as the lead single for his second studio album, My Turn. The song peaked at number 15 on the Billboard Hot 100. On November 9th, 2019, Baby, who was featured in YouTuber KSI's song, Down Like That, along with fellow rapper Rick Ross and British producers SX, performed it for the KSI's Ringwalk at Staples Center for his fight against YouTuber Logan Paul. On November 15th, 2019, Baby released a song from the film Queen and Slim, titled Catch the Sun, which subsequently appeared on My Turn. On January 10th, 2020, Little Baby released a second single, Some to Prove, for his album, and it reached number 16 on the Hot 100. The album My Turn was released on February 28th, 2020, and debuted at number 1 on the US Billboard 200. It features guest appearances from Guna, 42 Doug, Future, Lil Uzi Vert, Lil Wayne, Moneybag Yo, Young Thug, and Ryla Rodriguez. My Turn produced 12 songs that appeared on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, giving him a career total of 47 songs on the chart, putting him at a tie with Prince and Paul McCarthy. Following the release of the album's deluxe version on May 1st, My Turn returned to the top spot on the Billboard 200. On June 12, 2020, Little Baby released the political song The Bigger Picture amid the George Floyd protests. The song also debuted at number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100, becoming Little Baby's highest charting song. His song We Paid, featuring 42 Doug from the My Turn Deluxe, also peaked in the top 10 of the Hot 100. 
In July 2020, Little Baby was featured on Pop Smokes for the Night from his posthumous debut album Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon. The track reached number 6 on the Hot 100. In September 2020, My Turn became the first album of the year to be certified double platinum by the RIAA. The Bigger Picture received two nominations at the 63rd Annual Grammy Awards, Best Rap Performance and Best Rap Song. Earlier in the year, Jones stopped dating girlfriend Jada Cheeves. They had a child together, born on February 18th, 2019. She appeared in the music video for his song, Close Friends. He has two sons. For Baby, the process was slow. He used to be really frustrated like, this ain't nothing, I make more money than this in the streets, P remembers. I used to always tell him, but you don't have to deal with the consequences that you have to deal with in the streets. You ain't taking no chances with your life and your freedom. I used to have to instill in his head to just trust the process. I used to always tell him, baby, just trust me, it's going to pay off in the end. A drug shortage finally curbed baby's appetite for his old life and cemented his commitment to a music career. It probably was a drop for three weeks, he says, so I was like, I'm straight, I don't want to do it no more. So when it was time to go back and everybody got some again, I didn't get none, I just stayed rapping. Little Baby isn't even five years into his career and he's already envisioning a dramatized version of his life, whether that be a movie or documentary. That's why I really don't want to talk, cause my shit be raw, I feel like my story before I got here is just like one in a million, so I don't want to give it up yet. We look forward to more good music from the rapper. And that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed watching the video, go ahead and demolish that like button. Then, like I said earlier, tell me in the comments section what rapper or issues in the music industry you would want to see me make videos about. Finally, don't forget to smash the red subscribe button and hit the notification button so that you'll get notified when you drop a video on the topic you requested. With all that said, I'll see you in the next video. Let's go!